Cottage Crafts and I have another design team project video to share with all of you. So you can't actually see the base of the project because it's covered with all this gorgeousness of Mona Me Gabby. So the focal point of the project is going to be this photo and this photo means so so much to me. This was um, my husband and daughter were, um, had surprised his mom by coming by flying out to Oregon because I was there for the whole month of uh, November to see my little precious grandbaby Kyron. That's my son Trey. That's our daughter Kaylee. Well, our son and then our daughter. That's Steve and that's me. So uh, I knew they were coming out, of course, but they it was it was hidden from his mom. So these two flew out about a week before Christmas or Christmas Thanksgiving, and um, it was the first time that all of us were were together in one spot with this grandbaby because Kaylee. My husband and I live in Florida, so um, it just means so much to me. I love it. It gets me really emotional. I look at it, and I want to, um, in a good way, and I want to um, go ahead and put this on this wood plaque that I have, and I'm going to create create kind of like a um, home decor, or not excuse me, not home decor, but kind of like a really, I don't know, kind of it's a really pretty family kind of a vibe, I guess, slash home decor. So, and this is a uh, little Kyrene. Oh, I already told you that. Sorry. So, Emily, which is... Um, Trey's girlfriend she unfortunately couldn't be there she had to work so that's the only person that could be added that it'll be like totally complete so I'm going to set this off to the side and I did print that in some matte photo paper so I'm going to grab a couple things here that are not that are not Mona Me Gabby just to kind of get them off my table so I'm not sure which of these stencils I want to use um, if I want to use the little flourish one, one on the top here from Tim Holtz or if I want to use this stencil here from Prima so I have them both out here so I can decide as I'm going along. And then some different stamping. I have, um, I was thinking of using the Our Beautiful Life stamp from this Kaiser Craft stamp set. And then the clean mounted stamps, I was thinking of maybe um, using like, you know, um, this 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 very moment. I love that. So pretty. I mean, it's like a really, really nice stamp, I think. And possibly some of the background. I'll see. And then this one here, I'm thinking of, okay, I think I'm going to go with the doily because I forgot that I grabbed this stamp. So I want to stamp this in ink. On this, I want to use some different mediums. And I'll show you what, what those are as I go along. So those are the stamps I've pulled out. And as far as the different textures, this is some, um, all of these are going to be from uh, Finnebear's line with Prima. It's the texture paste in white crackle. I love it. It's awesome. And then this Claire Gesso, which is really amazing. Um, I've just re recently started playing with this. I've had it for a, a little while, but I was kind of like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I know how to use this or not, but I'm going to use it. It's a lot of fun. I did it on a project um recently too and these are some of Finnebear's little mini art stones so and then what I'm going to be doing to put on my hands beforehand is just using some of this art guard it does not leave your hands greasy or anything it's from Windsor Newton it's just kind of kind of uh, like having like a thin layer of gloves on if you don't want to get your nails you know nails stained chipped up or whatever your skin normally I don't care about that but I just painted my nails two days ago <laughs> so I want them to last longer than a few days if I can if not not a big deal because that's just the mark of a crafter. So we get these off to the side. And now we're going to get to the fabulous Mona Me Gabby projects or items I'm going to be using. Now before you... Or, <laughs> I uh, know before you think like oh my gosh it's gonna be like so gaudy what are you gonna be doing I am not gonna be using all of these items on to this piece of wood right here this is kind of like, like my process my design style is I get the focal point and in this in this um, project it's the wood board and then the main focal point is going to be this photo here so then I kind of start drawing on okay what kind of color am I going on what part of the house is this gonna go into and this this color palette is really what our living room is like so I just kind of, kind of pull from all of my Mona Me Gabby stuff that I have. I have a special drawer plus some extra boxes because I love them. But um, a lot of these are designer, um, design team pieces that, that I get for free to um, make something and kind of help uh, Marina uh, promote her store. So, And then these are some adhesive um, lines here. She has the squares and the lines. Normally I use um, um, score tape in like Beacon 3-in-1, but I do interview these not, not only in my Mona B. Gabby design team projects, but also my own other personal projects too. Different adhesives work for different purposes, so I like to have a multiple of ones that I can kind of pull from. So I was going to use some of these little glass seed beads, but I decided to play with the mini art stones instead because there's kind of a dupe for this. If you don't have the funds to buy the mini art stones or you can't get them in your area, white craft sand really does the same thing. I mean, it doesn't have to be white because you can add paint to it if you want to. 
but I'm going to go ahead and use these just because I want to play with them again. It's been a while since I used them. Okay, so let me kind of uncover the wood board here. So this is a wood plaque I got from Michaels in December of 2016 after their Christmas sale. I think I paid like two bucks for it. It was normally $6.99. But I love this wood. It's already kind of been pretty distressed for me. I love it. And the photo I'm thinking about putting it off up here, kind of like in the upper right, I'm thinking because I want to have a, I want I want to create kind of like a really pretty kind of floral where it kind of goes down the side and under the bottom here. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for now. And um, so I don't have a lot of real estate on that piece of wood I showed you, but I just grabbed a, um, you know, kind of a collection of things that really spoke to me that I wanted to include into this project. So this is just a variety of things here, some little um, bits and blings or some kind of golds in there. I might want to pull from that. I just have a, a lot of nice natural neutral pieces in here. Textural, got some laces. Um, this is an applique I've thought about using. Uh, maybe. Um, kind of like um, I'm using some sprays or something because I'm really even though this is white um, I haven't I'm trying to decide if I really want to use a combo of white and beige because this is kind of like you know the wood has some beige tones in it and this is white so I feel like these could probably work together um, I'll kind of decide as I'm going along and if I really want to use the piece like like say I really really want to use that flower because of the shape then I can spray this or, or use craft paint if I want to to kind of make this match more of the look I'm going for. So with all of that said, part of my raspy voice today, I'm going to go ahead and kind of get myself set up, get a little bit more organized, and then I'll flip the camera back on. I want this to be a uh, um, a process sped up video as well as a real-time video. So when I'm using the Art Stones and when I'm using any of the Prima products like the Clear Gesso and the Texture Paste, I will do a real-time video so you, so you can kind of see um, how I, I'm going to be using these different mediums in this project I'm working on right now. So I will see you all in the next segment. So I'll see you in a little bit. Bye! made some sense of everything that was on my table. And I think uh, this is uh, where, or, where I'm going to want to put the photo. It, and originally, before I got everything out, I was thinking of doing a partial stencil kind of up here in the upper left and have the picture here, but I really like the idea of it coming down here. Plus this uh, string doesn't get in the way, and I could easily cut this and replace it, but you know, I want the, the string to, uh, that we're gonna be using to hang it on the wall. I don't want it to, I kinda want it to just like disappear, so the focal point is on the plaque and not so, so much with the string itself, or twine, whatever that is. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna put the picture here as a placeholder for a second so I can kinda get a visual where I want this to go because I know it's going to come off the end I want that I want it to look that way I could get the whole stencil like this but I like it when it's kind of hanging off a little bit just kind of adds another um, little bit of texture and dimension so I'm thinking right about there I think right there okay so I'm gonna put go ahead and put the photo aside for now let me get my art guard on here real quick before I um start anything so if what I can do, I'll put make a note to my uh, make a note to myself to remember to um, put a link to the art guard and all the Prima goodies that I'm using, as well as a link to the Mona Me Gabby store because this is a Mona Me Gabby project, of course. So I will do that. That way, if you want um, any of these items, the, they're all going to be from Amazon. The Prima, the Prima goodies, and the art guard guard. That's where I purchased from with uh, Amazon. But if there's another place you like better purchasing crafting supplies of course go do go do what makes you feel um, more comfortable so i'm trying to think trying to decide if i want to do this in the claire gesso or no i'm going to do it in the i don't know because i'm going to be using the white crackle on here here as well and i want to do some stamping and then cover it with the claire gesso um that's a really cool fun product used to use too. so i want to do the white crackle i think i do Let's do the white crackle for this portion, and then I'll use the um, art, the clear gesso, in another part of the of the um, project. So, and you of course can color this. You can put like scoop them out in a separate container. Any some of your different sprays or inks or whatever, um, if you want to change the color. But I'm not going to do that because I'm going to do some different shimmer sprays to to spray this, which I did not show you because I have I have them on, on a container on the floor. So, and I wanted to mention to you. From all the things that I showed you at the beginning of the video, um, 
you know, I'm going to be using some items from that collection I put together, but I may also add some things that I did not show you, because that's just kind of how it works for me. And I'm sure, sure a lot of us out there are like that. It's not just me. So, okay. I'm not zoomed in very well, but I think you can see kind of what I'm doing here. So if you want to have like a really thin layer, just kind of scrape it back like this. But if you want it to be a little thicker, you can just kind of build it up and leave it, you know, kind of level a little bit more. And then you have like a thicker um, stencil. So I think I want to do that more towards this bottom left, though. So let's kind of put that on. And it's going to be kind of interesting to um, see how this is going to work on the um, the wood part that's showing through that they distress. So kind of curious to see how well this is going to stick to uh, stick to that and how it's going to look. So let's kind of do this. And then I'm going to have to stop my and pause my video while I go wash off my stencil and my um, palette knife. So because I don't like to um, I don't like I, I like to clean my cool uh, my tools right away. I just don't want them to get, you know, stained or damaged or whatever. And that's just totally me. I'm not playing that if you don't that your stuff's ruined. It's just, just 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 how I am. So, kind of put a little, little bit thicker down here on the bottom because I want it to kind of have a little bit more of a raised edge a little bit. Okay, so we'll do that. And then we'll take the stem, stencil out of the way. And I am not going to waste the gel so that's on here. Look how cool that looks already. I have this um, ongoing, well, I have many art journal books, art journals, but this is one, a specific one, if I can find it quickly. Oh, where did you go? Where did you go? Let's see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. This is just a cheapo composition book from um, Dollar Tree. And I it's like this because anytime I have oversprays or, or leftover stencil or something, I just find a page in here to, to put it on. So I'm going to do that real quick, and then I'll go and wash off my stencil. So I speaking of art journaling, I have a couple different art journaling um projects I want to do, like themes or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and put this on this purple one over here. You can't really see it, but we'll do like this here, just, just in case you're not sure how you want to see me do it or whatever. So anyway, Monica uh, Monica with BC Doula, and I will link her channel below as well. She and I, she's like my um, like my surrogate mom or whatever. Um, she has TN just like I do. We both have had brain surgery, so I kind of found her that way, but she's also an amazing, amazing artist and crafter. So there's a couple different ones that she's going to be, uh, she's a, she actually started on her channel, that I'm going to do. And one of them is a um, 100 day art challenge. And then um, uh, it's called her life cues. So watch for those videos to be coming here pretty soon. I'm going to feel, I'm going to I'm going to be creating a new playlist for both of those, and I will have an intro video ex explaining what that particular play is, like, that playlist is about and why I'm doing that. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and wash off my stencil and my palette knife. But let me show you here real quick what it looks like before I go do that. So, you're probably not going to be able to tell the difference in thickness until it's probably dry and it's all crackled. But I, I did, went a little bit thinner here on the top and kind of um, made it a little bit bigger or a little thicker on the other side. So if you don't like those little pieces that are on there that are kind of hanging off, you can just um, grab those and do that. So on this particular project, I really don't want these hang-offs to, to be on these little extra pieces. So I'm going to just take a Q-tip and just... Um, you could use a toothpick too if you don't have that, but I just get my Q-tips and uh, toothpicks at the Dollar Tree. And of course, I have to get the purple ones. <laughs> if they're available, that's what I like to get. So, All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let this kind of dry for a moment, and I'm going to take care of my tools, as I mentioned, and I will be right back. So I'll see you in just a minute. A couple days later, my facial pain prevented me from being in my craft room the past couple days, but I wanted to show this to you since um, the... This is what I was talking about in the last clip. So you can see that really nice crackle in there. I love this crackle medium. It is so cool. Now you could take a heat tool and dry this if you want to, but per the packaging it says that, that if you do that, you may not, not get those nice deep cra uh, crazing and kind of crackly things. So I really wanted the crackle to show up. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. I think the next few segments are, are gonna be me um, just doing their process because, um, but I will stop when I use the art stones and the clear gesso. So I will see you in the next clip and play with the clear gesso. So this is a, a, again what the um, container looks like. And um, 
I will, will link all the different mediums that I'm using in the description box below so you can go, go uh, check out where um, prices and everything from Amazon that's where I got all my money anyway. so this is the archival ink in jet black and the reason I want to do some stamping with black is because the black that's in the picture like my husband's shirt and my son's jacket just to kind of tie in that a little bit so um, I want to use the archival ink because I like how um, I like the color I like how deep the, the black is in this one if that makes any sense and the stamp I'm going to use is from Kaiser Craft and it's this stamp set here we go and it's this half doily that I'm going to be using right here. So it's kind of um, playing around with placement. And what I want to do is I want this to be in the upper corner a little bit. Oh, oh, what I did corner around the pictures of the photo because of the curves on this here. I thought it kind of looked a little bit, kind of, kind of like it was more um, uniform, I guess you could say. So I kind of want this to be right about there. And I'm going to put the stamp here. I was just kind of playing with placement, see where I want it to go for sure. And I'm thinking that's where I want it to go. It picks up just a little bit. So I want this to look like it came, um, like it's an extension of the photo. So wherever I put my photo, the bottom right is where this is going to go. So it looks like it's kind of attached. So let me pick this up a little bit so I can look at it. Okay, I think I like it there. So let's see. Okay, so there's that. Go ahead and pick the stamp up and get my block. Might need my larger one. This one might be a little bit too wide. Yeah, let me get my large one. This is just a smidgen too small, just so I can make sure that I'm getting a good clear impression. Okay, and I'm just lining it up to see what is the um, easiest for me to grab this larger block so I get a nice um, stamped image here. So I'm just lining this up with the grid on here so it's it's straight and not kind of curved because for this particular project I want it, I want it to be curved so or excuse me lined up straight so right about there. Okay so that's good. So I need to um, kind of put this stand this up and kind of have my head hit in the view of the camera because I want to make sure this is nice and straight. So I'll come back on once I got the image stamped before I use the clear gesso. So I'll be right back stamping. I'm going to pick this up so we can kind of get this out of the way for the time being. And you can see how good of an impression I got on there. N now, there's probably some little areas that are missing a little bit, like like right about there, but I don't care because um, I wasn't really trying to get a, a crisp clean stamp on this like I would for a card or something like that. Plus the board has some ridges, a little bit of texture. So that kind of adds um, to the character of this piece of wood because there's little chips of paint missing. You know, there's like a little knot right there and that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is give this a quick dry, even though I feel that it's already dry, but it's just to kind of make sure. And this is kind of what I was talking about with that um, archival inks from Ranger. I love how deep and dark this black is. Now I have I've had black um, inks from different companies and stuff but some of them aren't as a nice dark deep black as this one. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> so I really wanted that kind of nice deep dark there. So what I'm going to do with the gesso, this is the clear gesso. So in this particular application what I'm going to do is put some of this clear gesso just over where this half over this stamped image uh, is because whenever I, this dries I want to do some like little flecks of painting and some sprays and stuff and I want this to stay the deep black that it is currently. Now let me show you on another project here it is so I made this tag in um, on my last live with Michelle I will link that below as well so what I did is I stamped and I showed this in the video so I have some uh, um, stamps of some butterflies some of you can't see because they're kind of covered but you can see little peaks of the peaks of them here and there what I did is I put this um, some stamped butterflies on here coated it with with clear gesso and you can see here I've got some different sprays and some drops of black ink well the, the stamped butterfly image is going to stay just as you see it so it's kind of like a seal or top coat so to speak so whenever you put different layers of colors and textures and whatnot your original image in the back is going to stay to stay as good as it does um, when you first stamped it so I'm going to go ahead and grab this clear gesso 
Now it does look white, but this does dry clear. So I'm grab my paintbrush here. So I'm gonna try to stay in you know where this image is right here because I want to add some different pops of color with some different sprays and stuff. So I'll use this for the bigger part and then I'm gonna grab my more detailed brush for the um this part I'm just gonna see if this is the right size for me to use. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, shift this over here. So again I'm just grabbing from the um clear gesso. Just got a little bit on my hand. Let me wipe that off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this first in the main part of the doily here. So, um, yeah, the first time I used it was on that tag that I just showed you. I kind of have a bad habit of when I buy mixed media things like this and I don't use them right away. I don't know why I do that, but I'm trying to break that habit so I am actually using the supplies that I buy. So, And I'm having a lot, a lot of fun with this clear gesso. I mean, there are a lot of other videos that you can look um, on YouTube for other examples of projects where people are using the Claire Gesso in their projects as well. So, okay. I'm oh, sorry, I forgot to turn my phone off. Okay, put that off to the side, and now we're just going to stay there. We're just going to work on um, these little parts of the doily right here. So, just because I really want this to stay close to the stamped image because I want to add some different pops of color and different things like that. So the better example of this was was on that tag I just showed you because I use it I use this um, clear gesso on the whole entire part of the tag so or the whole top of the tag. So what I will do because that was like a almost like a six hour live and I don't want you you'd have to sit through all that chatter if you don't want to listen to it and I will put when I when I edit this video I will link that live I'm talking about and then I, I will put a timestamp where it actually starts from where I'm using this clear gesso so you can see how it works but I love to watch the long lives on replay if I can't join them join them when they're live because I like having long videos to listen to when I'm crafting. So, because if I watch a bunch of 10 minute, 15 minute videos, then I'm constantly starting and stopping, starting and stopping, and it takes away of my production, so to speak. I get, I, um, I get a little bit sidetracked. So I try to save the longer videos for um, when I'm crafting by myself. Me Meaning, the rare occasion when Michelle and I aren't crafting together, <laughs> Skype crafting, so. Believe it or not, those days happen, so. Not very often, but they do happen. Okay, I think that's about good. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry, and when I come back in the next clip, I will, I don't know if I'm going to be using sprays and stuff at this early stage of the project, but I, um, I wanted to at least show you how you how you can choose this in like a really small application or small you know, you know, like a smaller area of this board. So I will see you in the next clip. I don't know what exactly I'm going to be doing, but I will see you nonetheless. <laughs> see you in the next clip. Bye.
Okay, so I kind of have the general composition figured out. I took everything off the plaque, put it to the si side, because now I'm, well, um, what I'm going to focus on is adding some different sprays and stuff to this, just so uh, just so it's not like a stark, stark white. Now I do want to keep, kinda, I do do want to keep some of the white background because I'm going to be incorporating um, a, a few white flowers, but I kind of want to add more of like the kind of bringing out the tones. Let me grab this here real quick. More like bringing out the tones of like the browns and the greens. I'm definitely going to add black at the very, very end. And it's kind of this really, really nice color. And I'm adding the green because I think it looks pretty. And it's going to match my living room decor. So this is what it looks like. Of course, this is all dried. I did this a couple days ago. And then here's that stamp with the um, with the um, clear gesso on it. So when I put any sprays or anything like this, if I wanted to put you know, marks over it or whatever, it's going, it's going to keep this image crisp and clear because I put a coat of clear gesso which it basically is like a top coat for your nails or whatever it's gonna you, know, you can still see through it but it's um all nice and safe down there so the colors i grabbed that i want to work with um this tattered angels glimmer mist this is in caper green um you saw me use that on the flower this is some of the um waverly chalk paint from walmart and it's cashew and what i do is i dilute it and i add some water to it so i get kind of a different uh you know, different um, shade of color. This one I might use, I'm not sure yet. This is the Perfect Pearls Mist from Ranger. Perfect Pearls, the color. And then this cardboard from Plain Jane, which is um, Tattered Angels. And I'm gonna have my little water bottle here so I can kind of dilute things down. I grabbed a couple paint brushes in case I want to mess with them um, to kind of get, get some more detail. Then I grabbed um, a couple baby wipes and I think we are ready to rock and roll, go. Okay, so. Let's start with um, kind of the darkest and go to the lightest a little bit because we can kind of water it down. So I think I'm going to start with this green first of all. Let's kind of see how this is going to look. This is going to be so pretty. I, I love working with the, um, the different crackle mediums and things like that because I just lo love how it, um, the whole effect of all the crazying and cracking and stuff. Now if I feel like I have too much green on here, um, I can definitely use my water. It's right here. And I can kind of spray it and kind of get it to mellow out a little bit. You can also take your um, baby wipe and do the same thing. But I'm just going to use the water to kind of act as my diluter a little bit. So there we go. Got that. I guess the back doesn't matter because I'm, I'm going to be hanging on the wall anyway. So I won't worry about that for right now. And then let's see here. Kind of like how that looks. Now let's move on. I'm going to dry it just real quick actually. Just real quick. Sorry. I don't really want my brown and my green to run together. I don't really want to create a mud looking color, but you know, I definitely want to have those two colors kind of stand out on their own. So I just love this crackle medium. It's so lovely. It's kind of blot it dry just a little bit there. Okay, that's good enough for now. Now let's try another color. Which one do we want to go with next? Um, do I want this green just to be down there? I think I'm going to spray some green up here too, just so it's not kind of like one sided, so it's not like really lopsided. Now, I don't want the burlap string, I'm going to pan out this a little bit here. I don't want the burlap string that, to hang out. I don't, I don't want it to be green, so I'm going to put this um, baby wipe over the top of that right there to kind of protect that. But I can still get a nice um, shade of green up here in the upper corner. If you don't have a baby wipe, you could also use like a piece of tape that would work too like you know just regular cheapo scotch tape or washi tape or whatever so just gonna do a little strut up here it's kind of like a light mist more than anything kind of like that and then we'll water this down a little bit now the picture is going right there so you're not really going to see the picture but that's okay or I mean see the green but what it does is it adds to the um the layering effect so I like how that looks. That looks pretty good. Now I'll kind of give this a quick dry. And I think the color I'm going to go in um, next is actually before, yeah, I'm going to do the next color. Um, I think I'll do just a little bit of brown, but I'm going to use the paintbrush for this one. So I don't want it to be such a dark brown up over the whole project. So get that dry up there a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my paintbrush and we're going to do like a little more um, controlled color application. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see. I'm going to be working down here on the lower left. Now, I do have some flowers and things are going to go here. So you might be thinking, well, why would you bother, you know, 
um, working on the air it's going to be covered up because it's all part of the layering effect so if I decide to change the composition a little bit it's not going to be some stark white piece of uh, board against all the the green and the um, the brown so I'm not sure if I'm explaining myself properly on that one but <laughs> hopefully you kind of get the idea so I'm gonna get this off to the side and I think we'll work with a smaller brush do I need to go a little bit more I think so so you can see a little better and I'm gonna have to plug in my cam my camera here in a second too we'll try to get this part done so I just took the lid off and I'm just took my paint brush in here I'm gonna pick it up kind of like this so I can get it to kind of run down a little bit so we're just going to kind of play and see how this kind of runs through the different cracks and veins of um, the green from the crackle medium. And of course you can add some water, which I will do. I'll show you what that looks like. just want to kind of get a little bit more brown on there first. And if you kind of get a little heavy handed up here, all you have to do is, like I said, is just the same thing. Just take your water, um, your water bottle and kind of spritz it down. Or you could gently dab it off with a... Um, uh, baby wipe. You see how that's running down there like that? I love that. That is what I'm looking for right there. That is exactly what I'm going for. So I'm going to repeat this up here on the top a little bit. And we'll just kind of go up here. And then what I'll do this time is I'm going to flip it up, up, upside down actually because I want some of that same, um, excuse me, sorry I wasn't afraid. I want some of that same um, spray kind of going, the, the vein of the spray up towards the top here too. So just kind of get this in there like that. In a worst case scenario, if you don't like how it's turning out, you can just put gesso over the whole thing and then you can reapply the um, uh, crackle meat if you wanted to do that. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I'm staying in frame too. So see how it's kind of running up like that? I like that a lot. That looks so good. So it's kind of going to let it come down the side a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and plug it stocks. I need to plug in my camera and I'll come back on if I'm doing anything uh, more otherwise I will just make this last part of process because I'm just basically going to be doing exactly what I showed you so I will see you in the next clip okay so here is the board all prepped and ready to um, get my photo on all of my little um, you know assemblage area over here kind of the composition how I'm going to want to put the flowers and different things that I've um, pulled out to use in this project but I went ahead and used the Perfect Pearls Pearl Mist on it. I think it looks really, really pretty. I love that shimmery look. And you can kind of see, um, off camera I went back and added some more little bits of the green and, and the brown, but it was exactly, the pro process was the same as, as what I showed you earlier. So the photo's going to go over here. It's going to cover that mark, because I don't like that, but um, the photo's going to cover it, so it's, it's okay. And I added some of the cashew kind of down here in the bottom, and then I just came, came back through. On the very bottom of the Tattered Angels bottle, the spray, there's like a lot of the, you know, like little glitter bits and whatever, whatever, um, items they put in that to make it all glimmery and shimmery. I went back in and purposely scooped some of that up so I could have some pops of that gold like that mixed in with the green. So I think it's just really, really pretty. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and just um, get this all assembled. I'll probably put this part on process, um, like sped up, because I'm not the fastest crafter in the world. <laughs> I don't want to be here for like five hours watching me put together this little this little board here. So I have it up on a, a roll of score tape because I need to kind of elevate it so I can kind of see how it looks. That's why it's up like that. For the adhesive, I'm going to be using my Beacon 3-in-1 Fabri-Tac because it's a really nice quick grab glue and I fast grab glue and I love, um, this is my favorite wet glue to use. So you can use, if you're doing this project, you can use, you know, um, whatever kind of adhesive you like, glue gun, whatever. I just prefer the Beacon 3-1 for assembling things like this. So I'm going to go ahead and um, print under the copy because this picture here was just a placeholder. It's got some scratches and stuff on it. So with, I was mostly had it here so I kind of figure out placement and stuff. So I'm going to cut it under the photo and get it all cropped and everything. And I'll come back on and you can just watch me put this all together. So I'll see you at the end of the video. Bye.
Okay, so I thought I'd uh, um, do like a little bit of a real-time uh, talking portion. This is actually going to be the last thing um, that I'm going to add on to this. Um, well, it's not a canvas, but, you know, ultra piece altar piece of art, I guess you could call it. So I, oops, I forgot those gold things were on there. Good one, Abby. So I have some of these really, really cool kind of like um, gold seed beads, and I think they look really good with this. Um, I s piled some up here on the top, and then I added some more down here, and just if I liked it, and I do, but I forgot those were loose. So let me just get these off here real quick. So um, these are just a really fun um, way that you can add some more visual texture, and um, some pops of color and things like that. And you can get these pretty much in any color that you um, can think of. I don't remember where I bought these. I know Dollar Tree has some, but I didn't get this particular style from Dollar Tree though, that I know. So, and what I'm gonna be using for my adhesive is the um, PPA. It's a matte, and I love this stuff because it's so awesome to use for like different beads, whether they're plastic or seed beads, pieces, just really, really cool. And this stuff dries clear, and I love it. I, it's one of my favorite um, adhesives. May Flom is actually the person that um, kind of sold me on that glue, and I will link her channel, YouTube channel below. She's an amazing, um, amazing grafter. And I think she has a line called Lilac Lane, so of course I love it because it's part of my purple. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here. We'll get to the top part first. Oops, wrong way, Abby. Okay, just like that. So there we have it on the top. And then um, let me back up a step. Let me show you this before because it's gonna take some time for this to dry. So let me back out again. Sorry, guys. Okay, so here we go. So minus the gold um, little beads. This is how the... Um, the wall piece came out. I really love it. I think it's really cool. So almost everything on here is from Mona Me Gabby, minus the stamping and the paper. Um, the wood buttons are mine. They're vintage. And then um, this is a Prima Flower. But everything else is Mona Me Gabby, including the lace and all that kind of stuff. So I think what I might do actually is come back through and do a little bit like some dry gesso mixed in with um, some of that cashew paint, just to kind of have it be that kind of white-ish kind of beige color. This will kind of add some more, more pops of color to the flowers and different things like that. But when you do, when um, you guys watch the first part of the video, I already have pictures with that done. So I'm going to put this, the glass little seed beads on first, then I'll do that white paint. And I'm going to have to keep this pretty flat because those beads, you know, the glue really needs some good time to dry. So I'll just put off the side and finish it up to um, <clears throat> do my final photos tomorrow. But I really love how this looks. I think it's so lovely i just love it and i showed my husband and my daughter they both loved it of course and i have the per perfect place to hang it in our living room so hopefully i can get some pictures of this actually hanging on the wall tomorrow when it's daylight it is 705 so it's already dark here in florida so i'm just going to go ahead and, and finish up the last bit and i'll just kind of chit chat with you while i'm doing it so let me just get these in here so let me know in the comments below if you also like to use these little different, you know, whether they're plastic or glass, little seed bead type things. I really um, enjoy using them on my projects. And ever since I um, saw May Flom use it in her video, she she actually sold me on it because I was like, oh, I know it's supposed to dry clear, but I wasn't sure. And so she kind of does the whole process. And sometimes on new crafty things, I need to see how it looks before I you know, I want to put like on an actual project and not like it or do like a little test sample or something. So for some reason, the last um, live that was on my channel with uh, me and Michelle, um, <laughs> I took my black cap off and it popped off on the floor. and I can't find it. So I've been using this little bag here until I can find it again. So, OK, I think I had those over here. Is that where I had those? Yes, it was right in that area. OK, so I'm going to be careful not to try to get on the photo, photo if I can help it. And this glue kind of comes out kind of in a wonky way it comes out there's like three or four holes on the top of it and it comes kind of comes out all those little areas I'll try to show you see what I mean there's like little areas for the glue so that had that took me a little bit of time to get used to that the first time just scooping in here with a one of my antique spoons I was going to sort of pile these on kind of smush them into that glue a little bit and you can definitely this is buildable meaning you can absolutely um, get these out of the way here. You can absolutely build on top of this. So in a few hours, 
if I'm still, still working my craft, you know, I'll check to see how dry this is. And I can add more glue and build them even higher. I did that on one of my Craftmas 2016 projects. I will link that playlist below. And you can find it it's in my Altered Wood Tree video. And I did a bunch of like glitter and beads, different sizes of beads, and just, just things like that. So let me get these put back into the jar so I don't lose them. You know, like I said, it's just another fun way to add some different dimension and t visual texture to your projects, of course. So, And then what I typically do is after it's been sitting for a little bit, I kind of tip over the, the project and I get the loose beads because not all of them are going to be stuck to that little area right there because I scooped on a little bit extra. So it's it'll, um, they will come off a little bit unless you go back and add some more glue to them. So I'm just going to kind of let that sit like it is for right now. We'll go down to the bottom and add some more. I think that looks good. And then down here, I did a little test. What was it? Oh, it was right here. See how easily I forget some things, some things sometimes? It's crazy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just add some of that glue right here. Pretty good glob. And I kind of form it in the shape I want the beads to um, lay. So make sure I'm in frame here so you can see it. This is the easiest way I found to put these little tiny beads like this, is just using a spoon. And since I also am a lover of vintage and antique things, my craft room is basically decorated with, and my stores for my craft supplies are things like old library, wood, uh, um, old wood library card catalogs. I have some flat files from an, um, an a old um, architect's building, and I have all kinds of like two-door and four-door metal files and things like that. So I really enjoy having um, antique or vintage, you know, tools to kind of use in my crafting because I really do enjoy it. I've loved that kind of stuff since I was probably at least 10 or, or so because my mom, I remember, just going to scoop these off here. I'm not doing nothing extra here, just out of a frame, just for a moment. So my mom, what she would do when we were growing up, I, you know, like for milk, for dinner, or whatever, whatever it was, we got water or whatever, she would always serve mine in like, you know, like uh, wine cups or champagne, whatever, whatever, because that's what I liked. And so, of course, it was just, you know, like I said, just milk or whatever. But I, my love for vintage things started at a really, really young age. So I've just always loved that. So let me pull this up. Like I said, there's going to be some loose beads flying around, and that's totally fine. I will kind of push them in a little bit more here. And then I'll set this off to the side. And then once it's dried for a couple hours or so, I can come back through, shake off the loose beads, and I can even, like I said, it's buildable. I don't think I want to do that on this one because I really like the thickness and the height of these two already. So, like I said, I know some of those are loose, but that's okay. So I like how this looks. I think it's really, really pretty. It adds kind of like a touch of, you know, a um, little bit of, you know, kind of a, um, not a total formal, formal feel because there's gold on it, but I think it works well with everything else that's on this altered piece of wood. So I just love it. So if you've never shopped at Mona Me Gab before, let me hook you up with her, with Marina. She is the owner and designer for um, Mona Me Gabby. Her name is Marina Leone. I, of course, will link their website down below. And um, she's got some amazing, beautiful couture craft items. She also has been like a florist for like a super, like super, super long time. She's, she looks, her work looks like what you see on HGTV or like, you know, the, um, uh, you know, luxury weddings and things like that. They do all kinds of, um, occasions, you know, baby shower, whatever, whatever, and they have a full line of crafting items, including adhesive. So I am just in love with this. I cannot wait for this to be dry so I can get this hung on my wall in the living room. So I hope you enjoyed this um, full process slash tutorial video. I try to do a combination of both where I'm speeding up and then and I do like a real time because I, I know most of you out there like both and I try to try to, or one or the other, and I try to kind of have a little bit of variety. So I can um, make sure I'm listening to you all, make sure you put them content that you want to watch. So um, anyway, I hope you loved this uh, little tutorial. And if you have any questions for me, or if I went through something too quickly, or maybe it 
I didn't show you one, one step of this, whatever, please leave them in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon, um, soon as I possibly can. And again, make sure you're checking out uh, Mona Me Gabby since this is, is a design team project and I will see you all later. So happy scrapping, happy planning, and happy crafting, and happy altering. <laughs> yes, I'm a Cordy. I will see you on my next video. Bye!